Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the three branches of the United States government and its political party structure. Remember the legislative makes laws, executive enforces laws, and judicial interprets the law. Remember that a term is a time period a person serves in political office. For instance, let's start with the legislative branch of the United States government. It is known as the US Congress. It is made up of two houses, the Senate and the House of Representatives. You're not gonna need to know everybody in here just to kind of know some basic information. Like one, these two houses are put into power by direct election by the people. That if you are a senator, you can serve a six term uh, six-year term. If you are a representative, you serve a two-year term. You can serve as long as they keep on putting you in. Notice the bottom here. There are 100 senators, two per state in the Senate. That is to appease the smaller states to make equal representation. There are 435 representatives in the House of Representatives, and that is based on population. More states, more seats. North Dakota has one representative. California has 52. Also in this uh, building or these two buildings, House of Representatives and the Senate, are um, four or three of the four most important positions in terms of uh, sending to the presidency. The president is number one if they die, then the vice president, who also is the president of the Senate. Yes, they actually hold the same position. Uh, is number two on the list. The Speaker of the House is number three, and the President or Tempore of the Senate, the senior member of the majority party, is number four. Now, on the executive branch side, we have had 46 different presidents of the United States. Let's focus, of course, on what a president really does and how they get into office. Number one, they are indirectly elected by the people through a process known as the Electoral College. We will talk about that in a moment. They serve four-year terms. They can serve two times for a total of eight years. And then, of course, the vice president, which we've mentioned before, is both a part of the executive and um, legislative branches. The vice president only has two constitutional jobs. They take over if the president dies, and they break a tie if the Senate is, in, is voting 50-50. So they have the final vote in the United States Senate. All these people here, the secretaries of, are known as the cabinet. They are the top of every department here, like the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Veterans Affairs, the Department of Education, the Department of Interior. And they are the closest advisors to the President of the United States. And so you'll hear the term cabinet quite a bit. Some recent presidents and their popularity, Ronald Reagan was a Republican and was very popular, the way he projected American power in the Cold War. George H.W. Bush was also very popular due to Desert Storm, but he raised taxes when he says he wasn't going to, and he was hit with a recession, which meant he was actually voted out of office. Bill Clinton was also very popular. He was impeached and acquitted by quite a bit. Um, he eventually termed out. George W. Bush was not a popular president. A lot of this had to do with the Iraq War and the War on Terror and how he responded to Hurricane Katrina in 2005. He was also turned out. Barack Obama was a Democrat. He was a popular president, but very polarizing. A lot of people liked him for Obamacare, the health care plan, and his kind of young, hip image. He was seen as unpopular due to his foreign policy decisions, and he was the first president to really expand presidential power. He eventually termed out, and Donald Trump, a Republican, came in extremely unpopular. A lot of it had to do with his response to Black Lives Matter, but also his abuse of presidential authority and power, some anti-democratic statements, breaking constitutional norms, and his involvement in the January 6th coup attempt at the Capitol building. He had been impeached and acquitted twice. The current president of the United States is Joseph Biden. He is a Democrat. He is very unpopular. Uh, the Electoral College is the process in which we vote in a president. How does this work? Well, number one, a question had to be asked during the Constitutional Convention. How do we create an executive that doesn't resemble a king? And how do we create a mechanism for choosing that executive? And they did so under the 12th Amendment of the Constitution, and it was called was the Electoral College. It did two things. Number one, it maintained some kind of democratic principles, but it also put a check on the masses because you need to be careful with the idea that the masses need to have full and total control about how laws go because the masses by and large are not very smart and do very selfish and self-interested things. So instead we have the electoral college. How does that process work? Well, number one, you try to figure out a way to 
not have a national popular election. What that will do is cause all kinds of problems and it will be hard to manage because it's just too many votes for one country to actually maintain. So instead, you had the states actually hold elections. So on the first Tuesday after the first Monday in November every four years, we elect a president, but we do so in 51 separate elections. That's the 50 states and the District of Columbia states hold the elections. So you literally have everybody holding an election at the same time, 50 states and the District of Columbia. On election night, you want to focus on this number up here. It is 538. That's the number of electoral votes in the United States. Electoral votes are determined by the total members in Congress and D.C. So California has two senators and 52 representatives. Therefore, they get 54 electoral votes. North Dakota has one representative and two senators. They get three. On election night, whatever the popular vote is, you don't pay attention to it. The only number that matters is 270. The president that gets 270 of these electoral votes becomes the president of the United States. This is a good example. Here is the 2000 election. It's kind of hard to see. Let's go back. There we go. 2000 election between George W. Bush and Al Gore. If you want to notice, uh, you have Al Gore winning the popular vote by over 500,000 people. But when you count up the electoral votes, the electoral votes are won by George W. Bush. How does that work? Well, Guess what? More states voted for George W. Bush with the electoral votes. Therefore, George W. Bush became president. So when it comes to the 2024 election, the map you want to really look at is this. The red states are probably going to vote Republican. The blue states are probably going to vote Democrat. What really matters is Georgia, North Carolina, Virginia, Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, Wisconsin, Michigan, Arizona, and Nevada. Those are the one states that are really going to determine the outcome of the election. They are the swing states, otherwise known as the purple states. And you'll notice that presidential candidates will go to these states more than any others in the country. All right, so that's how the Electoral College works when everything is said and done. You heard, hold that election in early November. The electoral vote is state to state. And then the electors, the winning party, gets to choose who the electors are. In the middle of December, they go to their state capitals, then they cast the actual electoral votes. Of course, you know who will be president on elect the end of election day, but then the electors in the mid-December go to the cap capitals and actually cast their electoral votes. Then Congress opens up the envelopes on January 6th in the Capitol building and ceremonially announce who the winner for president is. It is not a coincidence that this actually happened on January 6th in 2021. It was an attempt to stop the certification of the vote, even though the certification was only ceremonial. The judicial branch contains the United States court system, the Supreme Court, the Court of Appeals, and the U.S. District Courts. To be a member of a federal court, you must be nominated by the president and approved by the Senate. Now, you serve for a life term, and this was because the, the founders, the framers of the Constitution thought it, that the court should be above politics and not be held to things like elections and political maneuvering, that should be focused on the Constitution only. There are nine U.S. Supreme Court justices. That's the only number you're going to need to know. To hear a court case, four of the justices must agree, and then, of course, you need to have a majority rule for a court case to be passed. There are a variety of political parties in the United States, a whole lot of them, but mainly on the political spectrum, most Americans fit here, either moderate, left, or right. Okay. Now, you will hear the terms liberal and conservative when it comes to left and right. Most Americans are neither. Most Americans are somewhere here in the middle, center left, center right. When we talk about the primary political uh, parties in the United States. The Democrats and the Republicans are the major parties. Libertarians, Independents, Peace and Freedom, and Green are minor parties. Most Americans are Democratic and Republican by a large, 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 large margin. What does it mean to be liberal? It means that liberals believe that more government involvement is necessary in people's lives, that change in government and social policy needs to be quick to make uh, society better, and that the government's primary job is to create equality. If you are a conservative, you believe less government involvement is actually necessary for society, that change needs to come at the margin and at a slower pace, and that government's main job is not about equality, it's about protecting civil liberties and basic freedoms of the people. 
Now, moderates have started to, you know, kind of blaze off of the Democratic and Republican Party and have made what are known as the progressive movement and the Make America Great Again movement. These are parts of the Democratic and Republican Party. They're not official parties. They are ideologies of these political parties that are moving farther left and farther to the right. What they are becoming is more radical. They are not socialists and communists, but progressives start to put their toe in the water in these socialist and communist uh, directions. Uh, Make America Great is not fascist per se, but they definitely dip their toes in the water of nationalism. And so, um, you know, these progressive and MAGA wings of the party are seen as much more radical than the moderate Democrat and Republicans. What this usually happens is the more radical that a political party becomes, then um, they start, both the MAGA and the progressive groups start to act um, like more authoritarian. The government must be overwhelming and dictating the policy that they believe is the true and correct policies to deal with. That they both believe that they have a moral superiority that is true and righteous and it overrules any constitutional ideals of the, of the government of the United States um, that they are fairly irrelevant because um, you know, morals matter. And in the end, the more that parties move towards the far left and far right, the more democratic ideals are eroded. And the Constitution is there to protect democratic ideals. Okay? So there's a structure of the United States government. There is its party system. Going next, we'll talk about some of the social issues that exist within the United States.